Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the Internet, thanks to the marvel of magnificent technology, I am able to come at you live from a little old guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This Dude, right here. This is Keith Anthony Blanche, and you're listening to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement, Radio for the Soul and the Transformation Station. A couple of announcements. Let me get right down to it so we can get to our phenomenal guest. This guy uh, lights me on fire. He helps me to keep going. He kind of feeds my my energy. In other words, if it was, if it was competition, I'd have to keep up with this cat, and that makes me hungry. Uh, Metaphysics returns to Memphis August 5th and 6th at the Agri Center International with the Memphis Metaphysical Fair. The Memphis Metaphysical Fair will play host to psychic mediums, tarot card readers, crystal and stone healers, and vendors. Native American motif, paranormal investigation, and 20 workshops over the two days, August 5th and 6th at the Agri Center International Memphis, Tennessee, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. $10 for one day pass, adult, and 16 for the weekend pass. Military discounts are available. Children under 12 are free. Workshops range from zero to ten dollars. Vending boots are still available. You could visit MemphisMetaphysical.com for more information. I am gonna have a booth there for the meet and greet, but I'm also gonna do a two hour presentation on radical transformation. I am very confident in my abilities to work with you in close proximity and so to speak, push a button in you and pop you open and give you a glimpse of the higher reality. And it's for you to grab the tools that I'm going to be giving you throughout the presentation and implement your life that you will be able to continue to experience what it's like to be in a heightened state of awareness. It's all about awareness. There is no other gig. Awareness can save your life. Awareness can save your soul. Awareness, awareness, awareness. I could sit here for another 30 minutes and talk about awareness, and I would not have mentioned it enough. August fifth and sixth, Memphis Agri Center. Come out and see me. My event's going to be my 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 talk's going to be from three thirty to five thirty. It's a two hour gig. So come out and see me. Radical transformation. The month of September brings this beautiful divine man to Memphis, Tennessee, and I get to interview him for the third time. God realized man, Swamji Viswayogi. He was the first God energy to walk on the earth. The truth doesn't require anyone's permission <laughs> to be real. Um, this is his ninth incarnation. He's going to be back in Memphis, Tennessee, and we're going to interview him, hopefully video as well, on Center of Light Radio. Stay tuned for that. Um, one final announcement before we get down to Center of Light Radio business is my band, Grand Theft Audio. It's kind of ironic. Grand Theft Audio is the name of my band, and our band trailer was broken into the other day, and they took a lot of stuff. But we have a fundraiser going. If you're interested in contributing to uh, the <laughs> the recouping or getting us back on our feet in a very good way, contact me, email at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. All right. Let me tell you about my guest. One reason I like this cat is he does a lot of videos on social media. I'm sure he does them elsewhere, but I'm familiar with him through social media. Um, He's on point. He knows what he's talking about. He walks what he's talking about. He is what he's talking about. He's he's on fire. He's on fire, and I tried to get him on the show a while back, and he got busy, as he deserves to be, because he's really good at what he does. And finally, we had a, a guest cancellation. Because tonight was supposed to be Dr. Eben Alexander, and he couldn't make it. So I contacted Nick and said, man, let's go for it. Let me tell you about Coach Nick. How to Create Freedom in Today's World is the title of the show. Coach Nick has been an entrepreneur for over a decade. And as an author, trainer, and co-founder of the Freedompreneurs Club, Nick has helped thousands of entrepreneurs become freedompreneurs. As an international lifestyle coach, Nick has become a value asset to businesses and their owners around the world. Nick's personality gives him a unique ability to motivate, inspire, and help implement successful strategies that generate leads, convert more clients, and increase profits while maintaining the integrity of his spiritual life. I can tell you that is an absolute fact just for the little bit I know the guy. Nick has been mentored and worked with some of the top coaches in the world and is a student of Bhaktamaraga. 
I'll let him pronounce that word in a minute, Swami, inside the Hare Krishna order. Bringing practical ideas and systems to any business he is involved with, Nick fuses spiritual development, business development, and accountability. Wow, that is a powerful platform, accountability, into every aspect of his business, which allows for higher impact and income. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Mr. Nick. Hey, thanks so much, Keith. I so appreciate being here with you. First of all, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Pereira? It is Pereira. You got it right on. <laughs> Not bad for an American boy. <laughs> that's a, you know what? That's a, one of the reasons I went with Coach Nick is you know, all my branding used to be Nick Pereira, Nick Pereira, Nick Pereira. And I would get Nick Pereira and Nick uh, <laughs> per, 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 per. And I was like, you know what? Just call me Coach Nick. We'll make it simple for you. <laughs> and it's actually stuck and it's worked well. Uh, for everyone out in the listening audience, if you want to get on uh, the air, today would be the show to do it. The number you would dial is 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355. For any questions, any comments you would like to uh, include into this broadcast. Nick, tell me how did this all start to happen for you? This is one of the questions I ask of all my guests because I think the beginning is very, very important of how people got on their path and what motivated you to get on this path? Was it just a life choice or did you find yourself painting in a corner and your metaphorical knee praying to God for help? Yeah, well, I've had, I've had <laughs> both those moments, right? I've had those moments where I'm, you know, lost and praying on my knees. And I think that God does that for us because he wants us to look at him. So he sort of makes you break down and get down on your knees until you wake up and, and start looking at him and saying, hey, you know what, maybe there's maybe there's I should be looking in a different direction. So I've definitely had those moments. But, you know, uh, ever since I was young, I was always in inclined to the spiritual journey. I remember in grade three, I went to Catholic school. And they were handing out Bibles to everybody, and I'm pretty sure I was the only one who opened it up and, and started reading some of, the, of these, the passages. And I was always inclined to go down the spiritual journey, but it wasn't until later on in my life when I decided that I wanted to start my own business. Now, I've always had a spirit that said I'm going to do my own thing and carve my own path. So when I was 17 years old, I started my first business. I was still in high school, and I remember everybody was going to prom. And I didn't go to prom. Well, I went to prom, but I didn't go to the after party. Everybody went to the after party, went to the beach, drank. I went home and slept because I had to open up my ceramic store in the flea market at 5.30 in the morning. And so this was, I always knew that I would just go down a different path. And I didn't really know what that looked like. But over the years of being an entrepreneur as a young person, because I was really young, I think a lot of people were intrigued by that. And because of that, a lot of people, you know, wanted to mentor me. And tell me, you know, their expertise. And they saw something in me that said, hey, you know what? This is, a, this is a kid that may do something special. And so I was able to be mentored and coached by some amazing people. Um, and really around, uh, around uh, the age of 25, so it's about seven years ago, I met uh, a coach and trainer. And she taught me two things. She basically said, Nick, uh, you got talent, but if you're not willing to work on yourself, or develop yourself, it's not going to happen for you. And second, when it comes to business, uh, if you look at any business, whether big or small, they're working inside of a proven model. And so you want to learn a model, you want to learn to master that model, and then you want to take the time to develop yourself. So I hired her. And uh, ever since that point, I've been engrossed in personal development, which then actually ended up uh, on a spiritual journey because the inclination of spirituality started coming. I started listening to these motivational speakers and these uh, business guys. But what I noticed about them was a lot of that they were teaching, it was just sparking up in my spirit, spiritual truths in, in their message. You know, they were talking and I could tell by their energy that they had great amounts of faith. And I started to correlate their success to their faith. I said, there's something to this. And that actually intrigued me to go back down the spiritual journey and that's when I ended up, you know, studying Buddhism, opening back up the Bible, and it eventually led me to the Hare Krishna. And so the gentleman you were talking about is Bhakti Mard Swami, who is also Thank known you. as the walking. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Who's also known as the walking monk, and who's who's become my Maharaj and someone that I've taken shelter under to learn and to continue to grow as a spiritual student. And so now I infuse spiritual principles into business because business could be a wonderful thing and i always remind people that business originated for the well-being of all humanity right business was never 
to just make profits and to you know be uh, and gain production business at its original core is about trade and trade was always about enhancing each other's lives hey you've got some skills or some materials i need i've got some skills or some materials you need how about we make a trade that enhances both of our lives this is the very simplicity this is very simplicity business business at its simplest form and so i'd like to break business back down to what it was designed for it was designed to enhance humanity and so i'd like to teach spiritual principles while building our business so that our businesses serve as what's called bhakti bhakti means devotion and so when we install bhakti into our business we install devotion we're taking god and installing it into our business and now our business becomes a vehicle for not just financial well-being but spiritual well-being and that's my mission and that's what i'm doing here on this planet in the intro when i was reading your bio I'm sure you noticed that it was really, really hammering on that word awareness. Mm -hmm. How was that word important to you? How was that idea, that spiritual truth, that spiritual technique, how does that play a part in your daily life and to the success that you have with what you're doing? Oh, well, I mean, it's everything. Like you, like you said, you could talk about it, you know, and, and still not talk about it enough. It's everything. Because one thing that I learned is, so as when I was a bit younger, which I'm still young and still learning, but when I was even younger, I, uh, I, I, you know, very passionate and, you know, I saw big things and I was pursuing those things, but I was very unaware of my own self, unaware of my own anger, my own frustration. I would blame others for me being angry. I just felt like everybody was, was just, you know, ticking me off, right? rather than realizing that i'm bringing that anger to the table i'm bringing that frustration to the table and so what ended up happening is through the process of spiritual development and going to seminars and courses and reading i became more and more aware of myself and awareness brings responsibility and once you are 100 percent responsible once you realize that you are here to um to create you're not the creator because you're not omniscient and omnipresent. I'm not the creator, <laughs> right, right? Right, right. So I'm not, I'm not God, but I'm a part and parcel of God like you are, like we all are. And so because we're part and parcels of God, we can develop God qualities. And one of God qualities is abundance, kindness, gentleness, right, receptivity. And so when I became aware of the own god qualities that are available to me and focused on that then those started to flourish in my life and they continue to expand and grow so awareness is everything without without self-awareness and without the, the the conscious practice of self-awareness uh pretty much whatever your life is at the moment is what it will continue to be only until you move into a deeper sense of awareness can then you do radical transformation Perfect. That is so beautifully said. And it's just like, for example, if you have a certain tone to your body, a certain body mass, it will always stay there until you work out. And when you begin to work your awareness mass, your awareness muscles begin to expand. If you are listening to this interview right now or watching a video, let's say, for example, if you were watching a video, I would have you turn away from the camera. As you continue to listen, listen to my voice, that is the real you. That is awareness. That is the ever-present you. That is the you that has always been. That is the you that is here now. And it's the, the you that will always exist. That's awareness. So, for example, as you listen to my voice, you know that there's a chair or whatever it is behind you. Now, now feel it. Just feel. Use your peripheral awareness and it, it steps to the fore even though you're not looking at it and you begin to practice this awareness expansion like Nick was saying just a bit ago it becomes second nature you no longer have to do the work it's now a vibration in your field it's by default who you become yeah absolutely love that so Nick what other key components that you incorporate as a freedompreneur coach or the, the creator of this movement um, Okay, we talked about awareness. You also talked about responsibility. In the beginning of uh, the show, when I was reading you about, I really laid into the word accountability. What mm. are some other key components that you can talk about that will help our uh, listening audience really begin to connect with the, the, the concepts you're bringing forth? 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. So, um, you know, I, I call it like there's three prongs to what I bring to the table when I'm working with a with a, a business owner or an entrepreneur. And, you know, we're all business owners. We're all entrepreneurs, right? We all, whether we're, even when we're working for somebody, because entrepreneurship is a mindset. It's a, it's a, it's a, a mindset of responsibility and responsibility means ability to respond, right? So same with accountability, ability to account, right? And so if you think about responsibility, we all have this ability to respond to our environment. And it's the way that we respond to what's happening is what actually creates our life. So while most people are stuck looking at life outside in, the first thing we want to do is shift that perspective and start looking at life inside out. I have a responsibility to everything that's happening because I have an ability to respond to it. And it's my energy or my response, my, um, um, uh, you know, my chi, my force, my energy that I bring to whatever it is that's happening that actually uh, manipulates it or contributes to, to what's going on. So the first thing is you want to work on a strategy. So, for instance, if you're a light worker, if you're an energy healer, I said you're going to be in Memphis, you're going to be doing some, uh, some, some speaking, and, it, and all there's going to be all kinds of tables set up there. And, and so everybody there is an entrepreneur. So let's say if you're a light worker, you're an energy healer. The first thing that you want to work with is in a strategy. Now, this sometimes doesn't resonate sometimes with light workers or healers because they say, no, no, Nick, I'm just going to allow spirit to guide. This, that's fantastic. That's, and that's okay. But if you're listening to this, maybe spirit has guided you to learn a strategy. <laughs> that is what I tend to tell people. Right, <laughs> right, right. You ever, it you ever it requires thing? a person's involvement. I mean, we can always constantly let go and say, well, I give it to spirit, I give it to spirit. And spirit goes, you know, you haven't made a choice yet. What do you want me to do with this? <laughs> That's right. That's right. What do you want me to do with this? Right. You know, you're still you still have free will and choice. Right. You know, you're Jiva soul. Right. And so because you're soul, you have individual choice. And um, and so there still needs to be a strategy to how you're going about what you're doing. And so. Uh, first thing is to learn a strategy. And there's many strategies. So I teach a particular strategy. I teach a certain way, certain lead generations, uh, formulas and marketing tools that you can use to generate uh, business and clients. On top of the strategy is what I would call skill development. And this is where we dive into, well, what skills does it require for me to make the strategy effective? Right. So I can know the strategy, but then I need to develop myself. Right. No different than, let's say, take it into a sports context. Right. The coach lays out the game plan. But if the players aren't working on their skills, it, you can give them the best game plan in the world, but they're still not going to win the championship if the players are not willing to increase their skills. And so skill development comes underneath the umbrella of skill development. We're talking from anything of great communication, self-awareness, right? Learning to direct your energy and learning to write good copy, learning to make good posts. And what ends up happening is throughout that process, and this is why I love the entrepreneurial journey, is you end up butting up against yourself. Oh, but Nick, I don't really like being on video. I don't really like being on radio. I don't really resonate with this person or that person. I said, well, maybe it's time that we learn to open up to these things because what you resist is what's stopping you. So the very thing that challenges you is the very thing that's serving you too, but only if you can see it as that. So whatever challenges entrepreneurs face, uh, through the process of skill development, we, we, we face those challenges head on and we, we transform them into our teachers. We say, great, you don't like to be on, on video. You don't like to be on stage. Great. Guess what we're working on? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, remind, <laughs> right, that reminds me of one of the Carlos Castaneda books. So you got these three guys, they were spiritual brothers, right? They're hanging out and they always busting each other's chops, but they and they, they open doorways to walk through in different dimensions. And so they got they got a new um a niche, a new guy that wants to start hanging out with the spiritual brothers who are working on their mastery. And they overhear him talking, that is a he has a fear of water, and there's a fast moving river moving right there, and they'll grab you and just throw you in it. 
<laughs> so in other words, deal with the situation. Figure it out. That's right. I love that. I love that, right? <laughs> right. What's the so best way that, to teach someone how to how, swim? Is that the part of your program is that someone can identify that this is not a wall. It's an, it's an opportunity more than it is anything else. That's exactly it. Absolutely. Every challenge that's presented to us is an opportunity, right? I would say it's God's lesson saying, okay, here's the next one and here's the next one. And so the more that you expand, right? If God is limitless and expanding, so are we. And that's why we have a call to expand. You know, sometimes, you know, we'll hear, oh, I feel like this call to do a business or start a charity or create music or paint or, you know, whatever it is for you. And this expansion that you're feeling is literally spirit expanding within you and saying, hey, it's time to expand and grow. But what ends up happening is your own mind or ego, your limitations, your identities come into play. And these identities say, no, I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not, you know, whatever it is that we learn from our childhood and the media and environment and from our parents and all these things that we've picked up along the way. Right. These things begin to stop us. So we identify more with the mind. There's a beautiful meditation that just simply says, I am not the body. I am not the mind. Right. I am not the body. I'm not the mind. So the more we can disassociate from these mental stories and concoctions that we've been given and told, then the more we allow energy to expand through us. And if you simply want to know what is spirit expanding through me, just think imagination. When your imagination yeah. is going yeah. on about what is possible, imagination is actually spirit, right? Expanding through you. You interpret it as your imagination, but it's not yours. It it's doesn't belong to you. <laughs> it doesn't belong to you. Your imagination doesn't belong to you. And this is the first, this is aware, you know, awareness, awareness, awareness. The first thing you have to become aware of is that your thoughts don't belong to you. Your imagination doesn't belong to you. It belongs to spirit. And so whatever you're imagining that really lifts you up, that really puts you in spirit, right? Inspired. Hey, Nick, I feel really inspired, meaning in spirit. That is a good indication of where you should put your energy and efforts. And then, so as part of the program, I help you get inspired. I help you get in spirit. And so, therefore, your imagination begins to flourish, and then you learn to follow that imagination. And then that's the third prong. So we've got strategy, we've got skill development, and then we've got accountability. And accountability is basically having a guru, having a mentor, having a coach. Why? Because you are going to stray off. You are going to get into ego. You are going to fall into, you know, scarcity or limitations or blocks. And your coach is going to act. And what I do for people working with me in the Freedom Preneurs Club is I'm there to make sure they keep walking the path. You know, one of my coaches said to me, Nick, I'm going to hold the courage for you until you can hold it for yourself. And now I pass that to others and say, you know what, I'm going to hold the courage for you and the belief for you until you can hold it for yourself. And as soon as you catch it for yourself, then you're, you're off to the races. Huh? You get kicked out of the nest. That's right. Time to fly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dig it, dig it. Nick, we're at the bottom of the hour. Would you give out your contact information so our listening audience can find out more about you and what you're doing and hopefully become a freedom promoter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's freedompreneurs.club. And, you know, that's the best way to contact me. You can get there. And, of course, you can find me on social media. It's Nick Pereira. Um, and that's, you know, it's a little difficult to spell, but it's P-E-R-E-I-R-A, Nick Pereira. And you can, you can connect with me. I'm all over uh, Facebook. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio to remind you about my lifelong work, RPM, Recognize, Plug In, and Manifest Your Life. Let me ask you a few questions. What is it you want out of your life? You want more financial stability? You want relationship? You want greater degrees of bliss, conscious expansion, and spiritual evolvement? These are magnificent, wonderful things, and I have achieved all of these by implementing what I am offering to you so you can apply this to your life so you can have all those things that you truly desire and truly deserve. I absolutely guarantee my work 100%. Go to Center of Light Radio, look at the opening page, the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Not only will you receive my awesome Power Pack newsletter monthly, but you will have access to my RPM program. Stay in touch with me, and I will send you everything I'm about, all my successful works, 
you can bet. All you have to do is contact me, KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Peace, love, and light to you always. Uh, I teach a program called Facebook Freedom, how to generate three to five leads per day without using ads. And so I'm all over Facebook because I, I walk it myself, right? I, I use Facebook to generate so many opportunities. Me and you are connected through Facebook. And you know, sometimes people tell me, Nick, is, 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 is being on Facebook a lot really spiritual? This is a good question sometimes I get, right? Like, you know, is it? And I say everything is spiritual. You know, one of, um, so my, um, uh, Bhakti Mark Swami, his spiritual master was a guy named Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada gave this wonderful talk when he was still alive, that he's, he was sitting there and he had a microphone and he said, you know, is this microphone material or spiritual? He says, everything is spiritual. A true master knows how to engage everything into God consciousness. A true master knows how to engage even the demonic forces or the opposing sort of darker forces into God consciousness. So I always say we're on a mission to spiritualize social media. We're going to use we, we, Facebook like anything else is a tool. It can be used either to spread a message of greatness or a message of destruction. So we use to choose social. We use social media to help spread light to more and more people. It's a wonderful tool to use. It's a beautiful tool. All it is is a sounding board. It's a blank That's slate. It. It's a mirror. And it says, you know, as you look in the mirror, what are you seeing? You know, I, I, for me, I, it helps me to do my spiritual work. You know, you were talking about any spiritual master will infuse everything with God consciousness, even that microphone. You take God consciousness out the way, there is no microphone. There is no spirituality. There is nothing. There is there's nothing to be disconnected. It's all part of the same matrix. But the gig is, is to become self-aware and as you become self-aware and you start to expand that muscle mass you will begin to not only see and i don't mean seeing with your eyes seeing is about sight having vision a blind man once said it doesn't require sight to climb climb mount everest it requires vision so you mm. become a hyper expanded your feeling base your seeing base your intuition base and then you really like nick i'm, I'm absolutely know that you know this <clears throat> Once you begin to connect consciously, you will know that you are connected to the all-pervading power, omnipotence, because the closer you get to God, the more power you get. The more, the closer you get to God, the more you know and omniscience, and the closer you get to God, omnipresence, the more you, you become liberated. Freedom in today's world, you know that you're not disconnected from anything. Yeah, love it. Fantastic. Yeah, and it's it. true. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, like, I, it resonates, you know, when you talk, I get the goosebumps, right? <laughs> I tell the God, I tell my spirit radar, right? It's when somebody is speaking from a space of being inspired in spirit, then there's a different energy to it, right? I mean, and there's a big difference when you infuse God consciousness into your daily life, drinking water becomes transformative. Right, because you're seeing everything as part of the one, like you call it, the one matrix. I like that, right? The one energy field, which is everything and all, per all pervasive. Once you're connected to that, there is nothing around you that you cannot use to forward your mission. And so everything becomes a co-creation. Everything becomes collaborative. You know, everything becomes an opportunity to expand. And that's God's activity, so why not uh, join in the dance? Nick, let me ask you if, you, if you feel that you want to share, and it's not too personal, what was one of your biggest obstacles to, you know, when you were talking about a wall, we were talking a block, about blocks, what came to my mind was, if you have a concrete wall in front of you, and that's your block, and that's your perspective, well, if you lay that concrete wall down on its side, then you can use it as a step. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so what, what was it in your life that gave you the most difficulty? And I have no problem sharing mine after. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just won. Eh? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, you know, just, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a great question. And it's such an honest question because it's easy to look at, let's say yourself, Keith, it's easy to look at you and be like, oh, well, Keith can do it. Nope. You know, he just must have no challenge. Like he's just out there doing his thing, making it happen. But, you know, you just, you just told us about a challenge you had about some folks breaking into your, into your place and, 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 you know, creating 
some disruptions for your band, right? And so we all have these challenges. So I've had a bunch, still have, still have things to work through. Um, one of my biggest things, though, was uh, was just scarcity, right? One of the things that is um, that it was there for me is coming from an environment where, you know, I never really saw lots of money or abundance around me. I never really saw, you know, people, um, you know, building businesses, right? Nobody around me builds a business. My parents are are, are hardworking people. Um, they're great people, loving people. They worked uh, jobs their their entire life. Uh, my brother is a great guy. He's uh, worked one job, you know, his whole life stayed steady. And then here I am, you know, just like, right, kind of that free spirit, you know, traveling. I also it was in the music industry, living in the back of bands and still doing it. I'm a nomad. I'm a gypsy at heart. Right? And that's my spirit. I'm free in that way. And so one of the big things that I had to work on and be conscious and aware of is how my own scarcity likes to play games with me. So that's one thing. And then I was angry. I was very angry as a child, very angry growing up and, and you know, into my early 20s. Um, and uh, getting over that anger was a big part of my growth, getting over that frustration that I felt and realizing that my frust- a lot of my frustration wasn't even mine. But I was carrying a lot of lineage. I was carrying a lot of frustration from my my father and my, and his father. And, and you know, I say my father, but not just my immediate father. I'm talking about my father's father's father's. Like who knows how far up the bloodline, you know, this this anger and frustration has gone. And what we sometimes don't realize is that we're born into a certain body that comes with certain um, tendencies. That body, our karma, puts us into a body. And that body, then we develop our body and it comes with certain tendencies. And one of mine was anger and frustration. So one of my biggest awarenesses and work to get over to ever expand abundantly was actually not to do with business at all. It was actually to do with my own getting over my own anger and being able to see and love myself through that anger. And uh, that was a that was a huge, huge uh, hurdle to cross. But I'm happy I did. 888-919-2355, 888-919-2355 is the number you dial to get on the air with myself and Coach Nick. I'm digging this dialogue, my bro. You and I walk very, very similar paths, bro. No kidding. Uh, Mm. In my past, um, one of my struggles was I was an angry boy. Um, My mom taught me a lot of fear. Um, Mm. My mother never ridden a bicycle in her life. My mother has never had never been in a swimming pool. And this is the old world paradigm coming from South Louisiana. Her her mother loved her so much, she didn't want her child to be hurt. And I get the mindset because I have a child, and I I get all that. But when to a point of imbalance. But these are the struggles that I went through. There's a lot of fear. And I, I'm, I'm successful in this regard that I'm, I'm actually going to take that one. I'm going to pat myself on the back. I don't have fears in my life anymore. Now, there may be some subconscious fears lingering, but when I find a fear in my life, I walk right into it. I, yeah. I jump off the cliff. I do. Um, but anger was an issue for me in my life many years ago. Do I get angry in today's world? I do. But I do it consciously. It doesn't justify the anger. I use it as a tool to make a point to say this is what I'm adamant about. This is what I'm serious about. And then I breathe into it, breathe into it, breathe into it, and dissipate the energy. So I use it consciously and divinely and purposefully. Now, sometimes it will grab me and say, and then I'll find myself in a situation of being angry. Then I bring myself back to center, and I begin to work the, the, work the energy, work the situation. But these are some of my issues that I had in my life. I I am actually thankful and grateful and appreciative to spirit and to everyone who's integral in my life to where I'm at a place, Nick, that I am actually truly a freedompreneur. I am on your team. I'm living in that space. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. You know, um, there's stories. There's a there's a story that I heard. Well, there's you know there's a um, uh, well known story of Jesus walking into the temple and and getting angry because the the temple was being used uh, to do business and 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 he's flipping over tables and he's upset, right? And so so this is this is Jesus doing that. There's another story of Shiva um, getting so angry that he has to leave his uh, his tribe go into the mountains and they say that if you still actually go into the certain place in the Himalayan mountains that you can feel Shiva's anger, you can actually feel his energy because he was so, and you know, as, as conscious beings, when we feel something, we feel it intensely, right? 
but 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 even uh, 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 someone as um, like Shiva who was able to do this, he he was conscious to move away from everybody, go into the mountains, and and express his anger in, in whichever way that he felt. Right, right. So, uh, human emotions are not to be denied, right? But it's to be used again. It comes from awareness. Is to realize that I'm not my emotion. My emotion is telling me something. It's talking to me, but I am not the emotion. When we identify with our body and we're not in spirit anymore, and we become our emotion, we make decisions for our emotion, and that's when we hurt others. We latch out to others. We want to blame others. We want to say, you're making me frustrated. You're making me angry. You're doing this. You're doing that to me, right? And it's a very separate way of thinking, right? But when we are in spirit, when we're inspired, we can we can realize, oh, I'm experiencing anger and actually see that as, as an anger of maybe something that's bringing to light for us, something that we can do, uh, that we can be aware of and we can use it. Like you said, you can transmute that anger and put it into something positive. Nick, uh, you gave us, I think you called them prongs. Is that right? You gave us three of them. so Three far? prongs. Yeah. Prongs, is that P-R-O-N-G-S? Yeah, prongs. Oh, <laughs> I got you. Uh, is there uh, any more to your strategy that we hadn't talked about yet? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think I think those are the three, like, sort of high-level points, right? Ultimately, then you sort of start to get to, into the nitty-gritty of the strategy. So, ultimately, I teach three, five lead generation strategies. So, we're talking social media. How do you use Facebook effectively? Then um, something called expert positioning, which you're doing beautifully. This show positions you as an expert, and you are an expert because you're showing your authoritative and comprehensive knowledge on the subject matter that you're engaged in. This makes you an expert. So by doing a radio show, by doing an internet show, by doing a blog, you're positioning yourself as an expert. So I teach people how to do that. I teach people how to, how to create events. Events are a great way to bring people together and bring people towards your mission. So again, let's say if you're a light worker, an energy worker, you're a coach or a trainer, you're thinking, well, how do I reach more people? Well, I share with people how to do effective online events so that you can gravitate towards people. Media, which again is something you're doing. I teach people how to get into media, how to become a, not only be on your own show as an expert position, but then position yourself as an expert by being a guest. So here I am, a guest on your show. All right, I've been on television. I've been on radio. I've been in newspaper. I've been in countless blogs. So I teach people how to get, get there. And then what I call collaboration marketing. Collaboration marketing is one dispelling competition. I can't share. I can't share Keith's stuff because Keith plays in the same market that I do. So can't ha make sure nobody sees Keith because I don't want anybody right, right away. That's killing your business. If you're doing any kind of thinking like that, you're totally missing the boat. So what I call is collaboration marketing, how to collaborate with your colleagues, with like-minded individuals, with people who are on the same wavelength as you to, to develop relationships and collaborate with them so that you can help them and they can help you. It's always an exchange. Right. And so when we're giving freely, you know, we're receiving freely uh, when we uh, I think it's a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And I, I may butcher it a bit. So I apologize to him. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> okay, but, okay. Uh, but, but but the gist of it is um, uh, you cannot help if you are serving others, you will uh, you will be served. Thou, thou, thou who serves shall be served. I think that's something like that. Again, I butchered it a bit, but but the gist of it is that if you go out and serve others, then by a natural byproduct, you are being served. Universe, God will serve you back. I love that, bro. That reminds me of something I've been practicing, implementing, being. That's a better word. Being in my life. I've realized that money does not come from me. I've realized that money does not come from what I do as far as playing music or being a radio show host or selling books. I've realized it doesn't come from any of that. When people contact me and ask me for spiritual advice or just a word or two about a situation, I've had people tell me, well, Keith, you know, that's what life coaching is really about. You can charge for this. I'm very aware of it. I'm, I'm aware of myself. I'm aware I can charge for this. That's where my money comes from. My money comes from the ability to move into that kind of space to where I'm sharing and increasing expansion in them and an abundance in them, which is a manifestation of my own abundance. And I am in that space, again, as a freedompreneur in my life. So 
I really support your point by saying it's really about not this competitive attitude. That just really, really grates on me when I see people going at each other or not supporting for each other. It's, it's just, yeah. I agree, it's not the way of it for me. Absolutely. I mean, think of it simple. I'll just give you a recent example. So um, uh, just a day ago, uh, yesterday actually, I did this thing called uh, 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 Walk with Krishna, Learn to See the Divine, is what I called it. It was a little event that I held in a nature park, absolutely free of it. And seven of us got together and I taught them some, uh, some mantras and we walked together. We discussed a little bit from uh, the ancient text Bhagavad Gita and we you know we chanted together and we we walked together and then we did a little meeting and discussion together very nice um this morning i get a message from someone from that walk who wants to hire me for a session for healing right i didn't ask i didn't even mention anything i didn't sell anything i didn't promote anything i literally was there just to spread the message of this mantra and of walking and walking with the divine that's all i was there to do to serve and because of that though already somebody has come back and has offered me back some abundance from that in the form of money um and that's that has is how money is created money is created by giving value right money is created by that's why thou shall be served uh, if you right then if you go serve then thou shall be served right because um, God, like if you look at nature, and remember that you're part of nature. So sometimes we think we're separate. We kind of look at the tree and go, wow, that nature's so beautiful. But then we don't say that about ourselves. We don't say, hey, I'm so beautiful. Why? Because I'm part of nature too. So if that tree is beauty, so are you. You're actually made up of the same substance of that tree, right? And so if you look at nature, you'll see that nature is so abundant serving so much right a tree produces fruit fruit falls to the ground it becomes the soil it becomes more trees right this is their law of exchange right so nature doesn't compete nature just plays its role and is fully looked after and so when we play our role and we just do what it is that we're called to do what imagination is working through you and you follow that then uh then god will put uh, everything in your path to support you because why would why would God want any of his children or why would any if you're a creator, would you want your creation to flourish or would you want your creation to struggle? Hey, you'd want it to flourish. What's what's the passage that Jesus recited to someone in the Bible? He says, uh, you know, look at the birds. Aren't they fed yes. and clothed? And are you not greater than they? That's right. right. That's right. right. I love it. The birds. Yeah. And, and again, I'm butchering that line, but it's, you know, the birds, look at the birds of the sky and the beasts of the ground, right? Does my father in heaven love you less than them? Right? No. Are they saving for a rainy day? Are they, are they? No. Look at nature. It's teaching you how to be in the world. Right. And when you ooh, trust. I like that. Ooh, that ooh, 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 let's, I like that. How to be in the world. Yes. Not how to do, That's right. how to be. be. That's right. In, in, right. in the ancient text in Bhagavad Gita, uh, it talks about three modes of material nature. The mode of ignorance, the mode of passion, and the mode of goodness. And these three modes um, are, are prevalent all in our society. When we can recognize the mode of goodness, when we look at, the, when we look at nature and we are in a forest, or we're looking at the ocean, or we're observing even a picture of nature. That is showing you the mode of goodness. So a tree can teach you, because look at the tree. The tree isn't forceful. It's not trying to be better than any other tree. It's not saying, oh, I wish I... <laughs> I'm an apple tree, but I really wish I was a pear tree. It wouldn't be so good to be a pear tree, right? It doesn't do that. What does a tree do? A tree grows. It grows calmly. It goes through its ebbs and flows, right? It has times where it retracts. It has times where it expands. And then the tree, over time, as long as it continues to grow, it then bears its fruit. And then that fruit, be fruitful and multiply. It doesn't bear one fruit, but it bears fruit in, in, in such abundance that that fruit then feeds others, feeds the animals, feeds the birds. Some of the fruit drops and becomes soil, which gives life to new trees. You see, nature is being 
in the mode of goodness. And so when we act in the mode of goodness as well, then we also get to be fruitful and multiply. So the tree huggers <laughs> from back since the 60s, they were truly leading the way. They knew stuff that we didn't know. <laughs> totally. They totally did. Yeah, they totally did. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I dig that. So, Nick, what, what's uh, on the horizon for you, sir, with you and your work? Anything you want to share more with us about this freedompreneur um, lifestyle that you have, sir? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, right now, I mean, what's on the horizon for me is expanding what I'm already doing. You know, it's wonderful. I love when people ask me that question and, you know, they say, so what's coming up next? And I'm like, well, exactly what I'm doing now, just in, expans in expanding it. So I really found like, you know, I found where I am at of what I'm doing. And so what's what's on the horizon is um, is continuing to expand the Freedom Preneurs Club. Uh, I want to share the message. I really want to help what I call popping people out the matrix. Now, not the same matrix what you refer to, but what I'm talking about is the corporate matrix. I'm talking about the way that people are choosing to live their life. So right now, a large mass of the population is going through the system of going to school, getting a, you know, maybe a, going to some kind of after school, whether it's college education, going into tremendous amounts of debts over it, graduating from that. And I'm not knocking education. Education is a great thing, right? I'm not, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm just saying this is the general sort of pro progression of people's lives. Then they, then they graduate. And then, you know, it's kind of like buy the house, get another massive debt called a mortgage. Right. And then you become a slave to the system. You essentially become a slave to materialism. Right. Your whole life is spent creating money to pay off things that you bought that you didn't even need in the first place. And and you thought you needed it because they told you you needed it. They told you this is what success look, look like. So right now there is a model for success and it looks like, you know, getting a house and having a mortgage and making monthly payments on that mortgage and having a job and this. And what I want to show people is a new model for the way to live, where, where you create your own job based upon your God-given value. So if you're an artist, I want to show you how to create life by, by sharing your art. If you're a musician, I want to show you how to share your music. You know, I work with a magician right now, right? He, yeah, like this guy is so in spirit. You know, he's just absolutely fabulous. And he's using magic. And he's creating a life for himself as a magician. This is a freedompreneur. What you're doing, you're a freedompreneur. You know, people who are bringing their, their talent and their gods, their gifts, and they're expanding it. This is what I'm about. And this is what I want to show people. And the platform that I've created is called the Freedompreneurs Club. So what's on the horizon? Talking to more people. Enrolling more people into the Freedom Preneur lifestyle and spreading this mission to as many, many people as I possibly can. Brother, we're in the same spot. I, it's, I don't want to do anything different. I just want to do a whole bunch more of it. <laughs> That's, That's it. Really, I love it. Right. And it's really cool. I've always said that, you know, like, and I love what you just described in the process of instead of going to college, which is not a bad thing, education is beautiful. I get all that. But when you find who you are and you're able to live in the essence of and stand inside of yourself about who you are with your talents, your gifts, all those things that you have, you know, I'm a musician. I do this and do that. You have your thing. You do this and everybody has their thing. But when you can stand in that and you can begin to expand that and really, really nurture it and watch that thing grow, you become unique. You are unique, but you can do that one thing better than anyone else. And I've always said that when you do what you love, if God is love, then you are living your purpose. That's There's right. nothing else. And by law, prosperity becomes it becomes to if it, it comes to fruition. It's what happens. No two no two snowflakes are alike. No two fingerprints are alike. So we all have a unique pattern. We all occupy a new, unique space and time. And God is smart, you know? He's not dumb, right? <laughs> God is very smart, right? He doesn't create whimsically. He didn't put you here to just, you know, to, to like, by accident. You're here on purpose. There's a purpose. There's a, there's a greater plan. And so to align with that greater plan is to really look at the gifts and talents you have and acknowledge it. It's good to say, hey, you know, I'm good at this. Look, I know that I have an ability that when I talk, people listen okay i have a certain voice and certain makeup in my body that allows me to be a preacher 
I know this. This is why I know my job is to preach, is to go out there and to spread the message. Because it's in my body, it's in my voice, right? You may not have the voice and say, well, I can't do what Nick does. Well, it's not your body, right? Your body, though, can maybe look at something <laughs> and bring the beauty in it. Or your body can hear something and, and, play, a, and, and play something. Like, me, I'm like, you know, like, you don't want me on the instruments, right? You, you know, that's not where you want me, right? You know, that's not, that's not going to please anybody's ears, right? So, so it's, again, if you're a pear tree, be a pear tree. If you're an apple tree, be an apple tree. If you're an artist, be an artist. If you're a healer, be a healer. If you're great with mechanics, be a mechanic. And, you know, I love that my spiritual master said, you know, a, a mechanic could be spiritually more advanced than a preacher. And what he meant was that if the mechanic understands that he himself is not the mechanic, but he is just the instrument to put together the mechanics, then he is more advanced than the preacher who's caught in the ego of being the preacher. Right? And it was like, whoa, okay, okay, okay. So it's no one occupation is more important than another occupation in the eyes of God. In the eyes of God, we all need to do our work. So whatever you're good at, do it. Do it to the best of your ability. Understand that you're really not the doer of it, but you are just uh, experiencing it. And so you when get to you, enjoy the ride. That's right. You get to enjoy, enjoy the ride. The ride. Yeah. And you and and to enjoy the ride, you have to be aware and put in the the effort of what is going on. And once you hit that spot, man, you're just, it's going to be a really blissful ride for you. It's freedom. Yeah. It's That's freedom. true freedom. You're on autopilot. You don't do anything. It does it for you. And you just sit on the raft and the current pushes you. There's a, there's a, there's a, a saying that I read um, in one of the, uh, well, I'm reading uh, the power of intention by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Very good book. Oh my goodness. And there was another one of my absolute book. favorite teachers. Oh man. Uh, very powerful. And one of one of the quotes he had in there, and again, I'm I'm going to butcher it, but it was something like uh, like it was like a one legged animal said to a caterpillar, "Geez, how do you manage all those legs? I can barely manage my one." And the caterpillar uh, or the centipede or whatever the animal was said said, "Oh, in fact, I don't manage my legs at all." Right? Meaning the caterpillar or the centipede or whatever the animal was understood. Then he's not managing anything. I mean, imagine if you had to manage your body, you'd be dead. Like, 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 <laughs> like you think about if you had to consciously <laughs> right. think, okay, heart beat, liver do its thing, lungs expand. But see, you're not doing any of that. You're not doing right. anything. You're actually just going along with what already has been set in motion. The, uh, but you've been given free will and choice, and that's because the human form is really a special form. Because we can become aware, right? We can become aware. So some say, well, the animals are, are advanced. In some ways, the animals live advanced because they don't question anything. They just go with themselves, right? They just go with their instinct. But, in, but they're not advanced from a spiritual perspective of the sense of the, the awareness within the animal. You can achieve higher awareness in the, in the human form. The human form is designed to cultivate the spiritual side of you. And so don't waste the human form doing animal things, namely eating, sleeping, sex life, and defending. Right? Go above that and learn how to create and learn how to manage and work with the subtle energies. And now you're going on beyond the animal perplexities of life. You're going into what is the fully human, what... Lord Krishna, Lord Buddha, Lord Jesus, uh, um, your Swamiji that you have here in front of us. These are what these guys set the example of, right? Yes, yeah, so th this is an example of, of God consciousness, an avatar. And so look at the avatars and, and um, be inspired by them. Nick, we're at the top of the hour. Would you give out your contact information once more and leave us with a final thought, my brother? Absolutely. So you can connect with me at uh, on social media, Nick Pereira, P-E-R-E-I-R-A. -E Just search for me um, and you'll find me. Uh, you can also go to freedompreneurs.club 
and you can connect with me there shoot me an email sign up onto our free mailing list just get to know me and uh and reach out to me connect with me say hey i heard you on keith's show and you know i would love to connect and chat i love connecting with new people every time we meet a new person it's like meeting god in a different form Ooh, that was juicy, bro. That's really cool. I dig that. Especially someone that you can just connect with and have that kind of, you know, you and I had that. As soon as we met, we kind of saw each other in a certain way. And, you know, and we'll finally have the opportunity to connect here on this show, Center of Light Radio. Thank you for being here, sir. Keep me posted about what's going on with you, new ventures, and how things are moving. You're always welcome here. Oh, yes, I will for sure. And you uh, you as well. Please keep me informed, and, uh, and let's just keep inspiring the world. My brother, thank you, everyone. Mr. Nick Pereira. I really enjoy talking with this guy. I met him, I must say, a little less than a year ago. We had some wonderful dialogue here and there, and we finally got him here on Center of Light Radio. Next week on my show, we're going to have Dr. John C. Robinson. This man will open up your heart, and he will get in there and begin to massage it. He is truly phenomenal. He's the gentleman I interviewed some time back twice about the new aging and death. And he has a way of putting the idea of your passing in such a comfortable place that it almost becomes scarily inviting. <laughs> he has that kind of gift. He makes you actually almost yearn for your death by the way he understands it and the way he delivers it to you. He's going to be here with his new book that we're going to be talking about called Nick, you're going to have to show up for the show called The Divine Human. And he's really good about what he does. Check, check that out. Uh, a couple more announcements. Um, September Swamji Viswa Yogi, God Realized Man from India, is going to be on Center of Light Radio. And the theme for this year for his tour is Healing the Earth by Purifying the Waters. I have some pretty big questions for him. Is uh, One, if that is the theme, then what about what's going on at Fukushima? Mm. What's still going on in the Gulf of Mexico with the oil that Supposedly, supposedly is capped. These mm. kinds of questions that revolve around this theme of healing the earth by purifying the waters. And of course, I'm going to ask him some other fun questions, but also Memphis Metaphysical Fair, August 5th and 6th. August 5th and 6th, I will be there giving a presentation from 3.30 to 5.30 on August 6th about radical transformation, pushing that button inside of you, having you have a glimpse of the larger reality, the greater reality, which is really just you in an expanded kind of way. And once you get a taste of that, you're going to want some more of that pie, trust me. And then for the next two hours, I'm going to be giving you information how you can implement that in your life. And I promise you, you will see results and you will get back with me and go, oh, my God, what did you do to me? I'm going to say, that's exactly what I did to you. <laughs> oh, my God. Peace, love, and light. My name is Keith Blanchard. When you lay down at night, remember there's nothing you have to do. There's nothing you have to do ever for any reason. But when you lay down at night, there's nothing you have to do. Breathe, 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 breathe like you wanting something beyond you've ever known, something that you deserve. And when you breathe your way through the ceiling of thought, if you find yourself sitting here in the Stargate, you will notice a profound, deafening silence. And you will shade miles upon miles off of your spiritual journey by just listening. Be still and know that I am God. And when you live from that space in your daily life, the Stargate will open and there you will be. And down the stream you will go. Peace, love, and light to you. My name is Keith A. Blanchard. I'll see you next Monday.